Welcome back investors. TPG Investing here and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about Skills, ticker SKLZ. This is a company that I previously covered at the beginning of April that has been getting a lot of attention this week. This stock dropped from over $46 down to $12.50 before ripping up a massive 33% on Wednesday. If you don't already know about Skills and you want to know more about the company in general then I suggest you watch my first video, although I will cover some of the main general aspects on this stock here. When I made the last video, the stock was in a massive downward trend and I thought we were nearing the bottom. However, it continued to drop a bit, but it is now trading above that price and there's a lot of positives lately. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at and discussing what skills do and what differentiates them from their competitors. We will look at the bull case and what's great about skills. We'll look at the bear case, including all these short seller reports and either debunk or validate some of the negatives. We will look at the technical charts, analyst price targets and the financials before finally drawing up a conclusion on this stock. Before we get into the video, the last skills video currently has over 200 likes, which is amazing. This video was the most requested in a recent poll on the channel and if you like the content, it would be greatly appreciated if you smash that like button. Can we get another 200 likes on this video? Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video with the potential to make you money. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor, I do not have a position in the company and this is not financial advice. Now let's get into it. Skills is an online multiplayer games platform, focused entirely on tournament based mobile games market and offers a small selection of games. The gaming market in general is worth over $175 billion and has been expanding for many years. Don't let anyone make you think the pandemic is the reason for this industry's attention this year. This has been a growing industry for the last decade, the pandemic merely accelerated. Of this $175 billion market, roughly about $86 billion is in the mobile gaming niche. Now there are many online games platforms and many game developers, however what skills offer is different from the rest in many ways and is quite unique. One of the most impressive stats I have seen on skills is the minutes per paying user per day. Skills outranks even the most popular apps such as TikTok, YouTube and Facebook. So what makes skills different from the rest? Firstly, Skills offers a skill-based competitive gaming experience where anyone with a phone can compete to win cash prizes. While the esports sector in general is made up of a very large player base with less than 1% that are good enough to compete professionally, and in general the costs of competing are quite high in comparison to mobile gaming, because to compete in esports the pros are spending thousands on equipment such as monitors, high performance GPUs and their computers in general. Whereas to take part in mobile gaming all you need is a pretty decent smartphone. Skills is targeting the other 99% to play games every single day but will never be competing professionally. Their slogan is Operation Esports for Everyone. By bringing player competition with prizes to mobile, Skills is letting anyone and everyone compete to win real money. Firstly, I want to point out that while there are plenty of mobile apps out there where you can win prizes, these tend to be luck based, such as mobile casinos, and are classed as gambling. Skills is purely skill based and therefore is not classed as gambling. Skills also provide the platform for these games. They don't actually make any of the games themselves and this brings so many benefits. The cost of research and development of games is usually a huge cost, but Skills do not have these costs. Developers can upload the games onto the Skills system to transform their mobile game into an esports event or tournament so that anyone with a phone can compete. So let's look at the bull case and the positives in the company. First of all, the company is backed by leading venture capitalists media companies and professional sports leagues and franchises, including the investment arm of the NFL and owners of the New England Patriots, Milwaukee Bucks, New York Mets and Sacramento Kings. Skills have teamed up with the NFL to create an NFL themed mobile game. The game will have joint marketing support from both the NFL and Skills and is set to be developed during this year. This is huge for Skills for reasons that we'll mention the bear case in a minute. Kathy Woods and ARK Invest have been buying shares and skills for months. I mentioned this in my last video and at that time ARK had just ARK held just 6 million shares making up 1.6 million of the next generation ETF. ARK now holds 6.8 million shares in the next generation ETF but they have also added just this week a further 6 million shares in the ARK Innovation ETF. So ARK have nearly doubled their investment in skills in the last week alone. In my opinion skills is a top notch management team led by CEO Andrew Paradise. And as I spoke about in the last video, 
They also have a leading industry veteran in Harry Sloan and have recently appointed Jerry Bruckheimer to the board of directors. I've spoke about this previous, so I won't go into detail again. Skills believes it has pioneered the future of the gaming industry, enabling developers to monetize their content five times better than ads or in-app purchases by enabling developers to expand the reach of the games and scale their business. Skills has a proven track record of improving mobile gaming economies. The average revenue per user of games built on the Skills platform is closer to $7.50 versus $2.35 for ad-based games. The competitive advantage here for Skills is their anti-cheat algorithm. Cheating is unfortunately really common in esports. Just think of games like Warzone where cheating has become the norm. Just look at YouTube, you'll see loads of videos of people hacking the game. Therefore, a strong anti-cheat algorithm is the most important piece of any mobile esports games. And with Skills being the first mover in this space, the company has built the industry's best anti-cheat algorithm, leaving Skills strategically positioned to dominate the esports technology infrastructure market for the foreseeable future. So let's take a look at the technical charts and the analyst price targets before discussing the bear thesis. So we can see here that skills rose quickly from around $12 in November right up to heights of over $46 in February. At this point it begins to move in a very steep downward trend and consolidated around $17 to $19 range in early April before again moving down. We can see here that over the past two weeks we've been consistently moving downwards until Wednesday, which seen an increase in volume and a breakout where the price rocketed up from around $12 to over $19. Now the price has been volatile since then going from 19 to 15 back up to 18 and down to 16 and is currently trading at $18. Judging by this we could see another breakout movement come Monday or Tuesday. So what do analysts think? Looking at tip ranks we can see that the average price target is $29 with a high forecast of 34 and a low cast of 17. The average price target represents a 60% increase from the last price of $18. The average price target is slightly lower than in my last video and this is due to Stiffel and Nicholas lowering their price target from $30 to $28. Simply Wall Street also places a fair value of $45 meaning that the stock is currently undervalued by over 60%. So let's take a look at the bear thesis to see if there's any cause for concern. First of all, when I made the last video, we were in a downward movement, and that was in line with the market in general. And then we had the case where the CEO had sold some shares, and the short seller report had been issued at the same time. So in the last video, I mentioned that the CEO had sold shares of approximately 200 million, and I don't think I put enough emphasis on the fact that this is only a fraction of his overall shareholding. It might seem like a major amount of shares, but the fact is that Andrew Paradise still has a shareholding of over $1.2 billion in the company. This shows the huge investment that he still has in the company. Also since then there's been another two short seller reports published in addition to the Wolfpack Research short seller report. So let's look at these and some of the issues that they've brought up. The first of these two short seller reports is by Twitter user Restraint, who published a report highlighting risks skill faces from the Google Play Store. Basically they've called Skills an unfair gambling site where the house always wins. We've spoken about this in the past video and how Skills is not a gambling platform. Players actually use Skill, so that's all I'm going to say on that. The second of these reports was from Eagle Eye Research. This was tweeted by an anonymous user from what appeared to be a new account, so straight away there's a lack of credibility. So the very first point in this short report is that skills business model is fragile relying on only a handful of games. First of all, this is actually an issue that I can kind of agree with. Approximately 80% of the revenue is made up from just three top games. And as we can see here, these top games are pretty much the same top games every year. I don't like to see this in any business for the majority of revenue to be made up of a small number of products or a small number of customers. However, skills is in its growth stage. They have an agreement with the NFL to make an NFL game. So although I do feel that this argument has some merit, I think it's been completely blown out of proportion and not something I'm going to worry about. The second issue they've highlighted was to do with bonuses. Now in my opinion, every publicly traded company pays extortionate bonuses to its management. That's just the way it is. 
So for me, this is a non-issue. And finally, Eagle Eye estimates that cash revenues were approximately 29 to 47% of GAAP revenues over the past three years. Now, this is a big claim. And this is something that I feel has very little truth to it for a number of reasons. The main reason being that every publicly traded company has to have their accounts audited and skills are audited by Ernest & Young, who are an extremely reputable auditing firm. They are one of the big four, and so I highly doubt that they would miss something this major. If they did come across anything that didn't look right in the accounts and they couldn't explain or find backup, they would give a modified audit report or refuse to give an audit opinion at all. None of these things happened, so I have to assume that the financial statements do give a true and fair view of the company. So let's look at the financials and highlight some key aspects. So revenue grew by 92% to $330 million in 2020, a huge increase in 2019. Gross profit grew 91% to $218 million, again a huge increase. The gross profit margin was 95% and net loss was $122 million compared with a net loss of $24 million in 2019. The gross profit rate here is amazing and the net loss is concerning because it's five times the loss of the prior year, but we'll look at that in a moment. GMV grew 80% to 1.6 and as at December 31st, 2020, the company had 263 million of cash and no debt. So big losses like this are common for growing companies and the company did recently raise funds through issuing shares. But the good news is that this should provide them with a very decent cash runway into the future. Overall, there's nothing concerning, so let's look at the income statement. When we look at the income statement, we can clearly see the increase in revenue. We can also see that sales and marketing is by far the biggest expense. Again, this is to be expected of this type of company. Sales and marketing are always going to be major expenses at this stage, and hopefully we will see that as time goes by, the increases in revenue should pay off. I don't think I put enough emphasis in the last video on just how much of a difference that sales and marketing expense makes. Let's just say for a moment that the company was to switch its emphasis away from growth and onto profit. Without the target of rapid growth, there would be no need for this expense on marketing. So let's take for example, if the company was to keep the revenue at the same level, but reduce their marketing by 50%. That would then mean that their 122 net loss would actually turn into a 2.5 million profit. Now that calculation makes a lot of assumptions that in practice wouldn't be accurate, but I just wanted to illustrate just how much of an expense their sales and marketing is at this stage of a company's growth. Finally then, looking at the balance sheet, straight away we can see that the company has very little liabilities with an asset to liability ratio of about 6 to 1. This is mainly made up of cash. When we add in the approximate 360 million from the share offering, we are left with a very healthy ratio of nearly 14 to 1. Overall, this is an incredibly strong balance sheet and leaves a lot of scope for expanding the company in the coming years. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this update video. I really wanted to address the fact that it feels that this company has been under attack by short seller reports lately. There's been an awful lot of reports on companies over the past few months, but I think three in a matter of weeks on skills just seems extreme. I wanted to take a look at what was in those reports and see if there was anything that was actually concerning. If you've watched all the way through, then fair play. I hope I've shared some information with you that you weren't aware of and I hope that you found value in this video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and bell notification. As far as I'm concerned, my view on skills has not changed a bit over the past few weeks. I'm still bullish as ever because I think this company has huge potential. They're in an industry that is expanding for the past decade and will, and will continue to grow in the coming years and Skills has positioned themselves perfectly to take advantage of this. As I said before, anyone that thinks the gaming industry over the past 12 months has been just a bubble due to the pandemic doesn't know what they're talking about, and the statistics are there to prove it's been growing for years. My biggest concern at the moment would be the huge loss posted for 2020. Those kinds of losses are not sustainable without doing a lot of capital raising. However, these losses are still to be expected and hopefully just not repeated. The company has met expectations regarding revenue and cost, and as long as they continue growing at this level that they are predicted, I think they'll be fine. It'll be interesting to see how the deal with the NFL goes, and if the company could get similar deals with other sports, or potentially deals with other sectors such as movies. Jerry Bruckheimer's influence here could have a huge effect, 
At the moment, there's a lot of volatility in the market, with skills posting a 33% gain in just one day on Wednesday. So I would say that if you are thinking about investing, do take care. Do your research and stick to your investment plan and strategy. As always, this is just my opinion. If anyone is thinking about buying into this stock, I encourage you to do your own research. As I said before, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Thanks for watching the video. What are your thoughts on the future of skills? Catch you in the next one.